Okay, good morning, everyone. Uh, trust that you're all doing well and that uh, you're able to hear, see uh, clearly um, the video and audio. So let's uh, pray and get started for this morning. Um, okay, we'll have somebody from our class here to pray, please. You can use the mic. <coughs> Father, we thank you for this day, for this time, Lord. We come to your presence and we worship you, we praise you, Lord. As we're going to start our classes, Father, we're asking your wisdom, knowledge, so we can understand your word deeply, Father. Through Nancymium, you teach us, Father. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name, Amen. 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 <clears throat> so, uh, we'll continue with what we have been learning so far. We talked about the prophetic in the Old Testament, and there were some wonderful insights. We particularly stopped at um, uh, Samuel's experience. And we said that he was in a time when the voice of the Lord, hearing the voice of the Lord was not very common. And so uh, he developed himself in the prophetic. Because he had such a heart for the prophetic, he also um, trained others. And we said that the prophetic, the gift is from God, the anointing is from God, but the, the preparation of oneself is possible. Uh, and we can develop the gift, so to speak, uh, and learn how to release it, how to uh, flow in it and be a blessing to others. So that's where uh, we were at. And then we saw that Samuel established the schools of the prophets. And we said that maybe... Uh, even people like Elijah, Elisha, uh, Gehazi, they were all trainees from the school that Samuel established. Um, then we went on. We, um, one second. Yeah, we went on discussing about the uh, prophetic and we said that um, the prophetic can be demonstrated through creative expressions, right? Uh, and we slight one other emphasis that we saw was the association of music, music, a prophetic song. So those were some key things from the last class. Now we will move on. Okay, I think we were at the uh, transfer. Yeah, transfer. Uh, the the PDF that I have open here, it's like moving on its own. So I'm just trying to control. I don't know what's happening. Anyway, so the prophetic influence. Now, what is the prophetic influence and how would knowing this help us? Okay, so the prophetic influence is basically... Um, the receiving of the prophetic anointing when we are in association okay, with uh, someone who carries the prophetic, someone or some ministry that carries the prophetic. But the influence here could also um, mean that when you come close to the prophetic, Okay, there is a, a chance of that prophetic anointing coming upon us. Okay, so there are two examples which uh, are given here in our um, notes. Just go to it. So one is about Moses and the 70 elders. Now we all know that there was a time when Moses wanted to, uh, was unable to take care of so many people. It was too much for him to handle. And so... Uh, it was wisdom for him to have others to help him out. Now, in this situation, appointing them was a good thing. However, we find that um, for them to have the anointing on them to serve well was necessary. Okay, so in Numbers chapter 11, okay, I'll, I'll just open the PDF once again. Please give me a minute. There seems to be some. Okay. 
Right, Numbers chapter 11, we can go to verse 25. If there's anyone who can read it, please. Verse 25 to? Yeah. Only 25? Yes. <clears throat> then the Lord came down in the cloud, and he spoke to him, and took of the spirit that was upon him, mm -hmm. and placed the same upon the uh, 70 elders. Mm -hmm. And it happened when the spirit rested upon them, that they prophesied, mm -hmm. although they never did so again. Okay. So notice, for leadership, Moses prayed over, or you know, he blessed 70 other elders who can help him in governing the people. But when he did that, what do we see here? The prophetic anointing came upon them and they prophesied. They prophesied only once because Moses was a prophet, right? So this anointing came upon them, but they prophesied once and they never did so again, it says. Now in that passage, when we read it, we'll also find that there was one person who was in the tent. He did not, one or two people, they were in the tent, they did not gather uh, with the 70, but apparently wherever they were, they prophesied. The Spirit of God came upon them and they prophesied. So what does this tell us about um, the anointing? The anointing can be transferred. And there is something known as its influence. Uh, people come under the influence of the prophetic anointing. Okay, And when they come under the influence of the prophetic anointing, they may begin to prophesy. Where do we see another similar situation where somebody comes uh, in contact with prophets and they prophesy, but their calling is not to be a prophet? Anybody like that, if you can recall from the Bible? Yes. So when Saul, he comes into the company of prophets, just at that time he prophesies, but otherwise he doesn't. Okay. Why did that happen? Because he is with the prophets. It's the prophetic influence. Got it? So that's how uh, the prophetic influence is. Now, how does this help us in our growing? in the prophetic. See, now that we recognize that this is possible uh, in a way, right? Like what we saw earlier in the case of Moses, when <coughs> he was uh, blessing other leaders, the anointing came upon the others. So similarly, when we are associated with a ministry or something, the prophetic anointing that they carry, it's possible that it can come upon us. Okay, that is one thing. Second is, uh, when we are in the presence of the prophetic, so let's say we went for a prophetic conference, or um, like here at APC, we have the weekend school. Or even now, we are studying about the prophetic. All these things can actually activate the prophetic in us. You got it? Whether we, how do I put it? Just because we attended a prophetic workshop, we may find that there is an easier flow of the prophetic through our lives. So making an effort that way is helpful to be around the prophetic anointing. Okay, great. So let's move on. Now let's read about the transfer of the prophetic anointing. Same uh, incident of Moses praying for the 70 elders. Now, what exactly happened? For the sake of leadership, the anointing came upon them, right? So there was a transfer of the anointing which was on Moses that came upon these 70 elders. We have talked about this even in the recent conference. We talked about, you know, a transfer of the anointing. Is it possible for the anointing to be transferred? That's the first question. Answer is yes, because we see that, like in the case of Moses and elders, anointing was transferred. But 
it not the entire anointing the way one person carries it it can't be transferred in the same way so we noticed that the 70 elders did not become like uh, moses in their leadership did were they able to lead the people yes but to whatever extent god called them now moses if you consider the life of moses he carried um, a mighty leadership anointing but he also carried um, a prophetic anointing he was a prophet right moses considered as a prophet but what did we read earlier they prophesied the 70 others but they did not prophesy again everything didn't come to them only leadership and to the extent that they were called okay so how does this apply for us today when we trust god for a transfer of the anointing we may not receive a hundred percent it will be aligned to the call of god on our lives and to whatever extent okay i think we've discussed this in the supernatural keys to supernatural ministry as well similarly moses later on um you know blessed joshua and released him but we find that joshua's leadership was quite different so though there is an association and a transfer of the anointing it doesn't look exactly like how it was for moses so in transfer of the anointing this is what we have to recognize and in the transfer of the anointing we can also understand that the anointing in a way um is has a measure okay when we read about jesus the bible says that jesus uh, had the spirit without measure meaning there was no limitation of the anointing that he carried how do we understand that uh, spirit without measure i've seen somebody explain that as all the anointings the apostolic the prophetic you know the pastoral everything all the fivefold anointings jesus carried because we we find that he functioned in all the offices he was a prophet he's the apostle and the high priest of our confession hebrews 3 1 so like that he carried all the anointings uh in a in a immeasurable way but when it comes to people again anointing has measures and uh, how much we receive and uh, how we develop it can sort of uh, increase it or cause it to decrease so when you look at an example such as elijah elisha okay there there is this thought of a double portion so it's possible the, the point is there are measures of anointing that people can carry so if somebody had a certain measure another person can have more than that or less than that so to to desire right we look at someone and we say oh wow you know i wish i could minister like that it's a good thing not out of envy but out of a uh, a sincere heart where we are desiring uh, it's it's nice and when you trust god that way align to our calling and gifting god will release the anointing but then from that point on it's our responsibility to see to it that the anointing grows okay so there are measures of the anointing it can grow it can decrease and so on yes yes on. yeah okay stated you will do more i mean you will do more greater, greater miracles yeah correct, correct, yeah and then can we tell that can we tell like that? And the second thing is, mm. anointing is in the sense only for doing miracles and all, or else anointing. You you told that Jesus have different different of like in preaching. Like, can mm. we consider this anointing in preaching or 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 evangelizing? Some people are very good in evangelizing mm -hmm. to just make them sit and listen, and some people yeah. are that they in a great crusades they can preach so right. people have the ability to teach well mm -hmm. can we consider this anointing for these things also yeah so see the anointing essentially uh, again we have discussed this in keys to supernatural ministry we said that we understand it as the anointing that indwells us 1 john 2 27 the anointing in you 
will teach you all things it says so there is an indwelling anointing which is nothing but the the presence of the holy spirit within every believer so all of us carry an anointing no we are anointed the bible says in christ we are anointed meaning we carry the presence of the holy spirit and there are certain functions of the holy spirit when he is within us like he guides us he leads us he speaks to us right so all that happens but the bible also talks about the anointing upon us and you shall receive power when you know uh, what you shall receive power when um, just not the holy spirit has come upon you and you shall be my witnesses so the holy spirit comes upon you that's the difference but that again is anointing so the holy spirit is the anointing you ask me is it the same anointing that jesus carried of course because it's the same holy spirit you got it same holy spirit so when we say the anointing upon us it's nothing but the holy spirit in an empowering manner who comes upon us now even jesus he had the holy spirit working throughout his ministry right that's how he did all the miracles and everything so same holy spirit now when we say same anointing uh, see it's a very broad question when we say same anointing are we saying same measure of anointing are we saying same same type of anointing all those questions come up okay so you your second question makes sense because when we say anointing there are various kinds anointing is nothing but something that enables us or empowers us to do something so we may categorize and we say we may say things like healing anointing teaching anointing prophetic anointing right so there are all kinds of anointing so do we have the same anointing that jesus had uh we it's the same holy spirit but the measures will vary because he had the anointing without measure now people may carry it to a certain measure and a certain kind of anointing got it but in jesus it was uh, everything was there in jesus role to do um, correct correct yeah so greater works we we will do that uh, empowered by the holy spirit i don't think any like uh, measure even if you have a little bit of anointing you can still do the greater works so i don't think it really depends on you know how much one's anointing has developed of course if the anointing has developed a lot you can do more greater works for god but yes there are types there are many types of anointings people carry yeah like every, every believer have, have have this holy spirit which indwells in us yeah but the other thing is which holy spirit come upon us that's an another anointing yes see it starts at that point okay uh that's why jesus asked the disciples to wait acts 1:8 he tells them you wait and then in acts 2 we see that the holy spirit comes upon them then we can ask the question whether disciples born again or not if they were born again holy spirit is already indwelling them then what is the need for jesus to say wait till you receive power from on high isn't it there has to be a difference if holy spirit is already indwelling a believer then they should be able to do the greater works as it is but we see jesus told them tarry wait till you receive power from on high so i think john 20 Uh, we have a, a scripture where it says Jesus breathed on them, receive ye the Holy Spirit. Okay, so that that point in the lives of the disciples is considered as the born again experience because it's the resurrected Christ breathing the Holy Spirit on them. So the Holy Spirit goes within them, right? They are born again in that moment. So John twenty is where they are considered born again till uh, that. they were not born again because no question jesus did not die and rise again right so they are born again but they still need an anointing on them which is the baptism in the holy spirit but that's the beginning
once we are baptized in the holy spirit there's really no limit to the extent of the anointing that we can all flow in so yeah all this um and holy spirit come upon us and this anointing so can we consider it like as a gift like see uh if 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 someone if someone needs an anointing one particular healing anointing you told preaching anointing so can we consider it same like the gift gift from god yeah is it, it is. is it the same we don't we may not use the word it is a gift okay because what is a gift gift is anything that we receive without deserving it so it is a gift but we would use more of um a term like grace it's the grace of god again grace if you look at the meaning uh, it has many different meanings but grace also means empowering god's empowering so it's god giving us that power though we don't deserve it so it's actually a gift only right and out of the the grace of god that we have we minister then again we say that there are the gifts of the holy spirit also that come into action right um through this empowering of the spirit of god yeah okay so i think we have a fair idea about anointing and how the transfer happens you know and the measures of the anointing so in this case we are saying prophetic anointing when we look at people like uh, elijah elisha moses they were prophets isn't it uh, and that's why we were discussing about their lives and the transference of the anointing from them to the next generation now one more interesting thought here sorry when we discuss about the transference of the anointing is that anointing can be transferred across generations okay so i know this is like what is that but uh, <laughs> let me just explain it here luke 1 verse 17 it talks about john the baptist saying he came in the spirit and power of elijah okay so that that is somewhat uh, challenging for us to to kind of digest what's happening there is the anointing of elijah that john the baptist carries okay and the bible is confirming that john the baptist he lived you know way later than elijah but he carried that anointing even though we've said this what we stated earlier about the um parts of the anointing being transferred that still remains when we look at john the baptist we don't see him flowing in miracles the way elijah did okay it's a completely different kind of a ministry that john the baptist had uh, he was calling people to repentance he was asking people to turn to god and so his ministry was turning people to god we can also say the same of elijah because of the miracles you know the hearts of the people would have looked to god so that part seems like it is common but you don't see the exact nature of elijah's ministry in john the baptist ministry okay uh, so the point is the anointing can get transferred across generations so how does that apply for us today how do we take that and you know use it no see there is a possibility <coughs> there is a possibility 
of an anointing that existed generations ago operating now okay uh, so how do we apply it one of the things that we will learn about anointings is uh, or let's say the gifts of the spirit is it it first comes to us through desire remember earnestly desire paul says the best gifts so when we desire again it has to be aligned to our call any and everything will not be given to us but when we desire aligned to our call it's possible to draw the anointing so i've heard people say things like uh, when they read about um, men and women uh, you know in in history who have served god mightily uh, and maybe they have a similar calling like us and we desire and we say wow you know they moved in these signs and wonders they moved in these miracles or they preach like this they impacted multitudes and we desire god i want that anointing there is a possibility when you desire you kind of pull on it you got it so it may be way beyond generations but because you're desiring it it's possible see and again we can't give one another anointings because in the case of elijah elisha what happened um elisha said you give me double portion but elijah said you're asking me a very hard thing but if you watch me being taken up then you will receive it because what elijah understood is anointing comes from god he can't give it to elisha right god can give it to elisha and so he told him okay you be obedient may the lord give it to you that was the point so now <laughs> excuse me when we desire can god take from the anointing of somebody in history and put it on us why not it can happen that's how we apply it okay so the key here is to desire desire particularly aligned to our call and purpose and then is it possible that we flow in the anointing of someone who went before us of course will it look exactly the same maybe not okay so these are all truths from the word of god that are very helpful for us we've understood how anointing is pure it comes from god there are measures of anointing um but ultimately you know through human agency or you know us uh, developing in that anointing we can serve better we can uh, minister better okay so if there are any thoughts any questions uh, let's talk about it otherwise i'll just move on to the next section here so we we are considering the ministry the prophetic ministry in the old testament and we have discussed many insights from there uh, one of the last sections here talks about the ministry of prophets to leaders we know that in uh, the old testament people would depend particularly kings would depend on prophets okay so for saul it was samuel he'll depend on samuel like hey tell me what to do when we read about david there are many prophets david seers there are lots of prophets you know who would hear from god and speak to david so speaking to leadership was also a responsibility that uh, prophets had and they would guide the kings they would you know um, speak to them about where god is leading them and how to fight their battles you know things like that if you go back even to people like elisha they also remember they heard from god and they were guiding and they were saying hey how is this battle going to take place what is a certain enemy king planning against god's people all this they were able to reveal so there was a role that the prophets played in ministering to leadership 
Okay, then talking about the prophetic anointing, we see that there was a definite demonic opposition to the prophetic ministry. A classic example here would be the opposition that uh, Moses faced in the palace of Pharaoh. There were sorcerers who came against him and they tried to imitate the anointing. But we know what ultimately happened. Moses' um, serpent, it kind of, you know, it, it uh, defeated the other serpents. Uh, de defeated the other serpent, swallowed up the other serpent. Now, the next one is Elijah. So in the case of Elijah, he lived in a time where uh, Jezebel, okay, Jezebel and Ahab, they were the, the rulers of the land. And one thing about Jezebel is that Jezebel was involved in the occult. She was very strongly involved in uh, sorcery and you know all, all these uh, kind of practices. And we know about the story of Elijah that he calls down fire on Mount Carmel. But after that, we find him running for his life because Jezebel is after him. Jezebel wants to kill him as she killed many prophets of the Lord. And so he is um, so scared. We also read about him becoming depressed. So what exactly is happening? You see, there is the demonic, uh, uh, <coughs> if you may call, uh, I know what, as Jezebel is giving a lot of attention to the, you know, all, all the sorcery and black magic and things like that. During that period of time, uh, we could say that there were certain spirits, right, that were oper operating. And because Elijah was operating under the prophetic anointing, what they tried to do is they tried to go against Elijah in the spiritual realm. So how did a prophet like Elijah become depressed? Sometimes we ask that question. But the answer may be that there was spiritual intimidation. Okay, There could have been some kind of oppression that these demonic spirits um, you know, it afflicted on Elijah. So when he was intimidated in this way, it's possible that, you know, he came to a point where he was so depressed and he wanted to give up. And we know what God did, you know, God just encouraged him and lifted him up from that difficult situation. But the point again, very similar to the story of Moses, where he found demonic opposition to the prophetic anointing that he carried, even Elijah faced opposition. So the question that we have today, when we operate in the prophetic anointing, will there be opposition? Yes. If there's any genuine anointing of God, the devil will try to compete. The devil will try to oppose. But one thing we have to recognize, we've learned this in Believer's Authority, don't make that a big deal because in any given case, Satan will oppose God's people, you know, whether you're functioning in an anointing or not. Okay. We need to learn to overcome in prayer, right? We need to learn to overcome battle uh, and defeat the powers of the enemy. Uh, but yes, there will be a definite challenge from the enemy's side and uh, we can be prepared for it. Okay, let's uh, now move on. This is about public ministry as a prophet um, and our personal obedience to God. There is a passage about a young prophet in 1 Kings chapter 13. So it's the entire passage. Um, it's a fairly long passage, so maybe we can read one or two scriptures and then I can explain it to us. Can someone please read? Okay, in, in our notes, I think page 45 
has 1 Kings chapter 13, verses 4 and 5. Someone can read that first. 1 Kings chapter 13, verse 4 and 5. Yeah. So it came to pass when King Jeroboam heard the saying of the man of God, who cried out against the altar in Bethel, that he stretched out his hand from the altar, saying, Arrest him. Then his hand, which he stretched out toward him, withered so that he could not pull it back to himself. The altar also was split apart, and the ashes poured out from the altar, according to the sign which the man of God had given by the word of the Lord. Mm. So there is a young prophet who goes to King Jeroboam, and he speaks God's word. It makes the king very angry, and the king wants to attack him. But when he stretches his hand out, what do you see here? His hand withered. Okay. So one thing we can understand about this prophet is he's really hearing from God. And very boldly is prophesied to the king. He knows how to take a stand. Okay? And when the king is trying to attack him, you can see the power of God that he's not able to attack this young prophet. So we've understood that he's very sincere in his calling. And uh, he also seems to be very strong as a minister. Now let's read on. In 1 Kings chapter 13, verses 8 and 8 through 10. 1 Kings chapter 13, verse yeah. 8 through 10. Yeah. But the man of God said to the king, If you were to give me half your house, I would not go in with you, nor would I eat bread nor drink water in this place. For so it was commanded me by the word of the Lord, saying, You shall not you shall not eat bread, nor drink water, nor return by the same way you came. So he went another way and did not return by the way he came to Bethel. Okay. So another thing that we notice about this young prophet is he's obedient to God. God tells him, after you go and prophesy to the king, you return in a different route. Don't eat anything, don't drink anything. So, even when the king tries to offer him something, he refuses. Okay? But as you read further about this young prophet, we'll see that another prophet comes to him. Okay? An older prophet comes to him and he invites him home, offers a meal to this junior prophet. Unfortunately, what happens in the passage in the passage later on is that this young prophet he goes with the older prophet for a meal. He eats, and God is angered by the disobedience. Because what did God say? He said, Go by another route, don't eat bread, don't drink, you know, water. He kept the uh, word of God when the king offered him something. He said, Sorry, king, I can't do it. But when he goes out, he meets a senior prophet. And the senior prophet tells him, hey, come, have a meal with me. Come to my house. He actually goes with that senior prophet. And he ends up eating. And then we read that uh, he actually <clears throat> got killed. It says, when he was gone, a lion met him on the road and killed him. And his corpse was thrown on the road and the donkey stood by it. That was the end. This is uh, in the section between uh, 1 Kings 13, 20 to 26. We see the death of this uh, young prophet. Okay, So what do we learn from this passage? We may be very strong in our prophetic anointing and sincerely operating right in that grace that God has given, uh, given us <coughs> or the gift that God has given us. But sometimes, you know, the mistake we make is that we let ministry associations dictate, you know, our decisions and maybe even our values, which can be very dangerous. Because in this case, initially, the prophet was obedient to God. Then when the senior prophet said, no, you come, he disobeyed God. Because of his ministry association, you know, like, oh, this is my senior, I have to listen to him. But what do we see here? See, even our 
associations or affiliation should not take the place of God. Now, sometimes we have to stand up in our obedience to God. Even maybe the people, our associations may be telling us, no, you do this, you do that. But our obedience, first of all, is to God. We may need to say no sometimes because we have to go by what God told us. What did God say? God said, don't eat bread, don't eat, don't drink the water. Whether it is the king or whether it is your senior ministry associate. Right? So obedience, not just in public ministry, in personal life is so very important. See, nobody would have come to know whether he ate or whether he drank water when the king told. Nobody will come to know what God told that man and what he did. Right? But that is personal obedience to God. Even in our lives, we can operate in the anointing, we can do many things. But what did God tell us? Are we walking in obedience? That is a question we have to ask ourselves every time. And we must not let our ministry associations override what God has spoken to us. Okay, Because I think that's a tendency that we all have. Okay, if we are not careful, we may end up disobeying God and just pleasing people around us. So that is also something that we notice here. <coughs> now moving on to the next section here. It talks about many different prophets and their ex experiences. Each of their experience was different. So there is an entire list of it. We can go through it. There were prophets like Isaiah. Ezekiel, Nahum, ha Habakkuk, uh, Zechariah, Malachi. And when we notice how the scriptures talk about them hearing from God, there would be words such as they received the burden of the Lord. Okay, So they received a burden of the Lord means what? They're getting a prophetic word and they're pro going to prophesy about it. Or there can be Words such as, the hand of the Lord came upon them. The hand of the Lord came upon me, you know, and, and I uh, spoke something. So that is another way that someone experienced. They felt like God's hand came upon them. But what was that? It was actually the prophetic anointing, which was leading them to prophesy. Other terms like, the spirit of the Lord lifted me up. So when Ezekiel, like he says things like that, it means that he's going to prophesy because God is showing him something. God is doing something uh, in, in the spirit realm. Um, a sense of seriousness. You know, that's also another way that we notice people experiencing the prophetic anointing coming upon them. Jeremiah, you know, he felt a, a sense of seriousness in his spirit when he had to prophesy. So these were all the experiences of different prophets. It came to each one in a certain way. right? So similarly, for us today, we may sense it in various ways. We'll come to one particular chapter where we will learn about how to operate in the prophetic. You know, how could we sense it in our times? We'll discuss about it. Okay, But these were the experiences of the Old Testament prophets. Now moving on to the next section here about warnings and judgments. Obviously in the Old Testament there are a lot of warnings that come as prophecies. Right? These warnings are for cities, for nations, for individuals <coughs> and uh, judgments as well. Judgments where we know that God is going to um, do something or there's going to be a consequence for the way that people have disobeyed God. Even when we talk about judgments, I think, I don't know in which course we have discussed this. I'm just trying to think about it. Maybe prayer and intercession where we said that Ahab 
a judgment came against him but because he repented right repented in the sense um not fully he could not uh, uh, undo whatever he did but at least he had a heart that relented and uh, so god kind of staggered the judgment so the point is yes god is quite severe when people disobey but we also see the grace of god even to a wicked king like ahab god said okay you know i i know i have given you these consequences uh it's going to come upon you this judgment is going to come upon you but it will be delayed it will be staggered that was god's grace right uh, even over somebody as wicked as ahab so i think what we'll do is let's pick up from this portion next judgment because there are a couple of things to discuss regarding you know judgment through prophecy and then we will move on to the next section here so let's pray and close for this morning i want to request somebody from our online batch to pray please could you kindly unmute and pray Father God, thank you, Lord. Thank you for this time that you've given us, Lord God. Father, whatever that you have taught us, Lord God, the gifts that you've given each of us, Lord God, help us, Lord God, consciously to realize in your presence, Lord God, and flow in that anointing, Lord God. And always remember, Lord God, the anointing comes from you, O oh God. And because you have given us, help us to obey, Lord God, to your voice all the time, Father God. Father, we pray that you bless each and every one of us, Lord God. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Jack. And thank you, everyone. Uh, God bless you. We will meet again on Friday and pick up from where we stopped. Bye for now.